So um, I wanted to share, first of all, um, it's been a really big day for the county even so far, just as far as strategic and structural updates to the way we do things. For um, the first time, we have appointed a woman county administrator to that permanent position, and it is just the second county administrator that Harris County has had. Uh, just as importantly, we just unanimously agreed to launch a strategic planning process, and I know it sounds wonky and it almost sounds obvious, but this is the kind of thing that Harris County didn't have, and it has taken us these years to be able to create the will and the infrastructure to really develop so much more accountability for all of our programs up and down the bureaucracy of around 20,000 employees. So this is going to be a big win uh, for all of us in Harris County to really be able to track uh, how the work we're doing is impacting residents and how it's, it's actually meeting the goals that Commissioner's Court sets. Um, there's another item that I wanted to talk about, and that is related to the jail. Uh, last week, there was another um, tragedy at the jail where Ms. Dominguez, um, Dominga Barrera uh, perished at the jail. She would be the 15th person to lose her life at the Harris County Jail, 16th if you count a gentleman who died in the hospital. And... Um, I don't want this to go by as a, an unnoticed death, as just a set of headlines and a sense that, you know, we keep saying we're trying the best that we can. We have invested since my arrival at Commissioner's Court over $100 million, in fact, over $120 million to update uh, the way the jail operates, more body cameras, um, better retention for, for detention officers, better procedures, we m more judges. Um, bail reform so that folks who cannot afford to pay and are there for a low-level crime are not in the jail. But we still have the highest population that we have had, uh, at least since I've been here, and that's unacceptable. And so what I'm going to propose, and I hope my colleagues join me in, is that we have a standing update at Commissioner's Court, every single Commissioner's Court meeting. We haven't had an, a standing update like that since uh, the COVID-19 item, and I want us to be discussing this every court because in my mind it is an emergency. In some sense it's a slow rolling one, but we have tried everything to reduce the backlog of cases, to improve um, conditions, and yet uh, we're seeing these tragedies. And it, it touches so many different pieces of the system, so it's not something that we can direct from up here, but I want us to be accountable and for the public to track what's happening there. Um, and finally, you know, I, I am wearing a, a, a Halloween necklace, and so I want to wish everybody happy Halloween and a safe Halloween, and just to remind folks to bundle up, to stay safe, stay in groups, check the candy when you get home before the kids eat it, and just have a wonderful time tonight. Uh, repetir en español, we'll repeat in Spanish, and then I'll take some questions. Entonces, quiero primero mencionar que el día de hoy hemos tomado unos pasos importantes en cuanto a la infraestructura del condado. Son pasos que de repente suenen aburridos, pero, pero son notables. Hemos nombrado ya permanentemente la primera administradora del condado, eh, no solo mujer, sino también latina. Eh, y además, hemos decidido embarcar en un proceso de planificación estratégica para el condado. Es algo que hacen todos los negocios prima, privados que el condado ha venido necesitando desde hace rato. Pero pero asegurarse que tengamos métricas específicas para todo lo que maneja esta burocracia de alrededor de 20.000 eh, empleados. Además, eh, quiero tocar el tema de la cárcel. La señora Dominga Barrera murió en la cárcel el año pasado, la cárcel del condado Harris. Es ya la muerte número 15 en nuestro condado este año en la cárcel. Sería la muerte número 16 si con contamos también un señor eh, que perdió su vida en el hospital después de tener una crisis médica en la cárcel. Entonces, ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Hemos invertido ya ciento, más de 120 millones de dólares de fondos federales. Hemos subido el presupuesto 30 millones de dólares anualmente eh, para apoyar las operaciones en la cárcel, mejorar las condiciones, pero aún así sigue esto sucediendo. La población sigue creciendo y eh, quiero poner, eh, proponer el día de hoy que todas las reuniones de la Corte de Comisionados haya ese tema a discutir qué se está haciendo para mejorar las condiciones en la cárcel. No podemos controlar todo aquí nosotros. No somos ni jueces, ni somos el alcalde, eh, ni, ni somos el alguacil, ni somos eh, jueces pues, de una corte, pero sí hay eh, esa necesidad de que, de que haya eh, atención constante a lo que yo veo es, es una tragedia, es un, 
eh, una crisis, podrá ser una crisis que es de largo plazo, pero hay que abordarla. Y finalmente, desearles a todos un feliz eh, Día de las Brujas. Eh, espero que la pasen muy bien. Estoy yo con este, con este gracioso eh, adorno. Pero recuerden la seguridad, está, va a ser frío esta noche, sí. tener a todos los niños en grupo, que no anden caminando por la calle y además revisar los dulces antes de que los chicos se los coman. Entonces, con eso, eh, I'll take some questions. Jeff, you, you've been outspoken uh, about your mental health journey. Um, it's almost been a month now since you've been back. I'm just curious if you could let the public know how you're, how you're feeling, how you're doing, and what it's been like for you to be back on the job now. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm doing great. I really am. You know, they told me I was, I was good to go. Initially, I was supposed to be at the mental health facility for five weeks, and then the care team extended it to seven weeks. So by the time I was ready to be discharged, the sense was I'm good now. Uh, I felt a lot better. But of course, in the back of my head, I was a little bit worried. You know, what if it comes back? How do I know I'm actually better? And now, you know, a month into the job, um, around six weeks after discharge, I really feel great. Um, and I'm enjoying everything so much more than I ever did before, just experiencing things from a different perspective and having a renewed commitment to really encourage everybody to, to seek mental treatment, to not be afraid of seeing a psychiatrist, um, of advocating for themselves when it comes to psychiatric treatment because it really works and I, I do, I just feel really, I feel great. I have seen a very positive response from the public. Um, I've heard from folks directly that said that my sharing my story encouraged them to seek help. So I appreciate that. I have also heard from people who confided in me that they're facing mental health challenges, but they're not ready to seek the help. And so I know from personal experience that it takes a bit of a drumbeat from folks to number one, recognize that they have a mental illness and number two, take the step to seek the help. And also if the, if the help they sought is not actually making a difference, find a different provider, a different kind of service. So uh, I hope that I'm just one, one beat of that drum and even the folks that aren't ready to take that step yet of taking the help that, that this is one nudge and eventually they will do that. Of course, there's the question of more accessibility of these services right now we have enough that there isn't you know a massive waiting list but um, but I hope I hope that we can continue to increase awareness and also increase services early voting is this week um, any words to encourage people to go out and vote and how important it is absolutely it's it's so crucial we have a mayoral election um, mayor Turner is term limited and so everybody anybody who lives in the city of Houston in particular it's such an important time to come out and vote but everybody has important propositions on the ballot um, various local elections and so I hope whichever side you're on that you come out and make your voice heard it is so important it's really what our democracy is about um, and I'm so uh, I, I'm just so excited I haven't cast my vote myself but I'll be out there on the polls as well how closely are you watching uh, the mayoral race? Obviously, the county and the city have to work very closely together. I know you've endorsed the candidates. Um, it looks like you may potentially go to a runoff if polling is correct. But how closely are you watching that, knowing that you have a new part, you will have a new partner to work with? Yeah, I mean, look, it's like uh, there's a new kid. There's a new kid in school, right? That's going to come in, and I'm going to have to make friends with them. And so, whoever wins, I'm going to work with. But of course, I have a preferred candidate, and I'm working very hard for that candidate. And uh, and 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 I'm working also to watch the the city council races and the proposal that would give the city council members more authority over the decisions that the city makes. So this will absolutely impact the county, uh, even if you live outside the city of. Houston, whoever is in there, um, you know, impacts, it impacts you, so that's why I'm paying so much attention to this race. I am a City of Houston voter, so I'll be casting my vote on that race, and, um, but I'll be ready to work with whoever comes in. Well, you know, we had a discussion about the conditions at the jail I want to say two years ago, perhaps even three years ago, there was a, a report by JMI that came back with some actions that needed to be taken. You know, we took some of them. Some of them lie at, lay at the feet of elected officials that we don't control. Some of them are not feasible. Um, we then requested, 
around uh, January of this year, there was an item to say, you know, exactly how are we going to reduce the jail population because we've reduced the case backlog in the courts, but the population is still growing. And so it just seems to me that there have been many analyses, many investments, um, all good natured, uh, well intentioned. Perhaps situation would be even worse if we hadn't done that over the past few years, but the situation is still dire. And so, um, you know, I want to. I want to make sure that even though there is a long-term uh, vision and a long-term project there, you know, at some point we need a different facility. Um, this is something that, that we need to really look at holistically. There is also an immediate issue of these jail deaths and this overcrowding and uh, our, our inability to retain enough uh, workers in the jail. And so I, I want to put it front and center as opposed to something that every once in a while we say, hey, go look at it again and come back to us. I think that that doesn't have enough, ener uh, enough um, urgency. But, but look, if, if I could, you know, I, I would dictate exactly what is needed to fix the jail. This is an issue that is divided among so many elected officials, and it also runs into this issue of, you know, um, around campaign times, really fear-mongering and saying, you know, if, if we have a little bit more discretion about who's in the jail, of course somebody who is released on bail is eventually is going to harm somebody else. And so none of the judges want to exercise that discretion. The DA may not want to exercise that discretion. So, you know, we just need to put those conversations front and center. Well, we got some good applicants. We got some good applicants. I'll share. We were very, very um, torn between the top two, and that's why it took us two different meetings to come to a final decision. And you know, it was it was a good problem to have to have two candidates who are eminently qualified and and had so much passion for the county. She is very qualified. She's worked up and down um, local government. In not just in Harris County. She has been with Harris County already for a while in the uh, Department of Economic Opportunity as interim county administrator and has really earned everybody's respect. Um, she's very straightforward. One thing I really like about her is she says, you know, I, I am not scared of making the right decisions. You know, she's, she's already um, done what she's gonna do. She's set for retirement. She says, I don't need this. I do it because I love it. So she really does this job to serve. She's not trying to climb. She's had her legacy of service, but she's bringing those tools to help us and help Harris County because we are at a really important time. So I'm excited to, to see her stay in a permanent basis and, and I'm proud of the decision, have a lot of faith in her. And I also think it's a big deal to give uh, to give her an opportunity. We didn't choose her because she is a woman, but the fact that she's a woman is very exciting and it sets a good tone for the county. Can you answer the thing about early voting? Sí, es, eh, ya está la votación anticipada, el día de las elecciones es el 7 de noviembre, e invito a todos a que participen, si viven en la ciudad de Houston, están la, ya las elecciones eh, para el alcalde, y son muy importantes, el alcalde Turner no se está postulando porque ya llegó a su límite de, de eh, mandatos, entonces por favor participen, voten, si no viven en la ciudad de Houston, igual hay varias propuestas en la boleta, hay otras elecciones locales y nosotros como comunidad latina entre más participemos más van a prestar atención todos los políticos, todas las personas que deciden lo que afecta a nuestras vidas, entonces participen, no importa por quién voten, pero vayan a votar, por favor. ¿Y cómo se siente de salud? Me siento muy bien. Ya hace eh, alrededor de seis semanas que salí del hospital, cuando me dieron de alta, pues en teoría estaba yo bien, yo me sentía bien, los doctores decían que estaba bien, pero pues yo igual estaba nerviosa de ver qué, qué iría a pasar cuando llegara a, al trabajo. Hemos tenido ya más de un mes de trabajo, días fuertes, días livianos, y la verdad me siento muy contenta. Eh, inclusive la corte, que realmente quien la vea, no, o sea, no es que sea un evento divertido, vaya, hay temas difíciles, pero yo lo disfruto, y es el no tener esa depresión, esa carga, entonces eh, pues sigo invitando a todos quien escuchen esto que si, si sienten que, que puedan tener una enfermedad mental que busquen ayuda, que no le tengan miedo a los psiquiatras ya si el psiquiatra no le gusta, la medicina no le gusta, pues busca otro igual que, que hace uno con otro, otro médico especialmente como latinos no nos dejemos eh, afectar por esa, ese, ese tabú de lo que es la salud mental, porque les cuento experiencia personal, el tener ese tratamiento, wow, o sea de verdad que, que vi mucho más, más contenta 
Okay, thank you guys.